and welcome in to Real Deal Sports Talk. It is Wednesday, October 26, 2016, and life is good. tonight. Everybody having a good night tonight? It's the middle of the week. Is your week going good? Is work getting at you? Are you enjoying the sports this week, the sports this past weekend, the World Series going on? I hope you are. I hope you're getting a chance, if you're a sports fan, to just take in as much sports as you possibly can. There's a lot going on, <clears throat> and you got to love it. I mean, we've talked about the World Series and the playoffs and Major League Baseball, we talked about the NBA season getting going this week, and we'll check in and see how that's going. Uh, game one of the World Series last night. Game two of the World Series going on right now. Um, shoot. All kinds of things. NBA games going on. I'm looking at the scores right now. They're changing as we go. Ring of Fame induction ceremonies. Champions getting blown out. Athletes going broke. Athletes saving their money. All kinds of stuff. <clears throat> we'll have uh, Jeremy Cunningham from the DirtCannon.com on tonight with Cunningham's picks. And, uh, you know, let's just get into it. We talked about, you know, players that should be traded by the deadline, top players that should be traded by the deadline. There's so many articles out there right now about the different players, different rumors that could be getting traded before Tuesday's NFL trade deadline. And CBS's Jason Mack Confora. Sorry, I, I have trouble pronouncing his last name. I always want to call him La Cafora, but it's Canfora. Uh, he, he wrote his article this week, eight, eight vets most likely to be traded at the trade deadline. If you haven't read it, check it out. He talks about specifically four teams, basically, that should be looking to uh, make their teams better by basically getting rid of some veteran players. And you, you can't really argue with some of these eight vets that Jason Lacanfora uh, thinks are most likely to be traded. Uh, from Chicago, he's got Alshon Jeffrey and Willie Young. I could see both of those happening. There's no long-term in deal in place with Alshon Jeffrey. He's, as Jason talks about in his article, he's got a history of injury now. Willie Young's coming up on another contract year, not having the same production he's had in Chicago over the past couple of years, where, you know, he didn't really blow anybody up, but he was a consistent producer. I can see both of those guys. Makes sense for Chicago as well. Cleveland, he's got three vets from Cleveland that they should be looking to most likely trade. Joe Thomas, the tackle, Joe Hayden, the corner, and Tremont Williams, the corner. Now, Tremont Williams doesn't look like he has much left in the tank. Maybe in a different situation, a different role. Uh, you might get something out of him, the former Green Bay Packers corner. Joe Hayden showed up early in his career, made big plays, had the pinky or finger thing last year, ankle injuries, rib injuries, things like that that's limited his play. But um, who knows, maybe, again, another situation, maybe he can resuscitate his career. And I don't know a team in the NFL right now other than maybe a handful that wouldn't want Joe Thomas starting as their tackle. So, uh, again, I can see all of those. Uh, the Jags trading, trading uh, Mercedes Lewis. Honestly, I've been waiting for Mercedes Lewis to live up to Mercedes Lewis's height. What was it, six years ago? He was supposed to set the league on fire. He was this big, tall, fast, rangy tight end in Jacksonville. Who was supposed to do big things never did anything he did the mma thing to help train that didn't do anything he's been injured he you know it's it's whatever with him so if somebody trades for him good for you and finally the last team the 49ers he's got them most likely trading joe staley and um toy smith who we've both we've heard rumors about both of those te players already with different teams so again you know, he's an inside guy. He's got a lot of connections. He, he, he gets a lot of stuff right. He doesn't n normally uh, write about things unless he's uh, got a pretty good in on them. 
So eight player, eight vets most likely to be traded. Not that should, not that would be good for the teams to trade, but just players that are most likely to be traded for one reason or another before the trade deadline next Tuesday, <coughs> which I can't wait for. I th personally think the trade there shouldn't be a trade deadline. Maybe the trade deadline should be uh, week 16. You can't make any trades week 17. Whatever, whoever is on your roster week 17 is who you have to do the playoffs with if you make it that far. But um, it is what it is. Did you guys watch game one of the World Series last night? Please tell me you watched that game. If you ever watched a baseball game, if you've been listening to the show and decided, you know what, KP's right, I'm going to tune in, I'm going to watch game one of the World Series tonight, and I'm going to see what he's talking about. If you did... If you're a baseball fan or, you know, you just decided, hey, I'm going to check it out, you witnessed a great game last night. One-sided, Cubs were shut out 6 nothing. but starting picture, Corey Kluber, man, that boy is nasty. He was hitting the corners. He was having late action. He started pitches that looked like they were going to be balls and hit players, and then right at the last minute they'd cut in. It reminded me of a guy I played Little League with. He threw this version of a curveball, and this thing would go up, come back down, and finish out straight. they never seen nothing like it before or since, until last night. With some of the movement, Kluber was getting on his pitches. Struck out eight of the first nine guys in the World Series. What? Are you kidding me? That was amazing. Then the catcher Perez hits two home runs. I mean... His first one obviously wins him the game by himself. Second one's just icing on the cake because the Cubs, they just couldn't hit nobody last night for the Cleveland. It was pretty impressive. It was fun to watch. Game two is going on right now. Uh, they're at a commercial. We'll check in on that in a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and John Lester last night, he did everything he could. Uh, he actually pitched a really good game. He had to change the game plan, I'm sure, after they got up those two runs early. And you kind of saw that where he got conservative and gave up that home run to make it 3 nothing. And they pulled him after 6. Perez hits another home run late, puts him up 6 nothing, and the Cubs just couldn't get anything going. They That pitching performance last night is what got... Cleveland into the World Series, pitching like that throughout the season. And you know, if Kluber's got to go two or three times in this World Series to give them a chance to win it, shh, throw him. If he can pitch like that two or three more times, man, that was nasty. Those pitches were breaking late. They were hitting high. They were hitting right on the edge of the plate, right on the edge of the zone. They were breaking outside to right-handers, inside to left-handers. It was just, it was nasty stuff to watch. Tonight's game started off, uh, Arietta started for the Cubs, Bauer started for the Cleveland team. You know, Bauer's been pulled, he gave up a few runs early. Uh, he was pulled after three and two thirds, I believe, something like that. You'll have to check the box score. And uh, right now, checking in, Cubs are up, uh, looks like, Four nothing in the top of the fifth. So there you go. That's where game two sits right now. We'll check in on it every now and then throughout the, the show tonight. <clears throat> As you guys know, <clears throat> the NBA season, regular season, the games that count, they are upon us. And LeBron, on ring night, on opening World Series night, raises the banner, goes for a triple-double. Now, everybody wants to talk he's not going to be Jordan, and we've talked about that before. No, he's not. Because at the point Jordan came along, the marketing scheme that was behind him, that built the current NBA, that built what is now synonymous to basketball, Michael Jordan is a synonym now to basketball, to the NBA. Because of them using him and his skills and his ability in that team, in that location in Chicago, in that mecca, to build the entire league and the brand. So no, LeBron's not going to be him. He's going to be LeBron. And there's not going to be another LeBron. LeBron's been to six straight NBA Finals. He opened up a season after he came back from 3-1 down to help his team in Cleveland win a championship 
and he opens up the season with 19, 14, and 11. Now, sure, Kyrie went for 29 points. He scored more in the game. But again, LeBron's got that triple-double. Taking over all aspects, being the leader, being the floor general, being the best player in the NBA. Like him or love him or hate him. Fact is fact. He's this generation's best player. And I think he could be better. I think if he wasn't so heavy and bulky, we would see a little bit more out of LeBron. Like we did when he was younger. Now, he's a smarter player now, but he's lost a little bit of that magic I think he had when he was younger with the size that he's put on. All right, let's get into it. It's about that time in the show. Let's uh, bring in Jeremy Cunningham for Cunningham's Picks. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing well, man, man. How are you? Good, good. Glad to have you on the show tonight. Glad you could call in. Thanks for having me, my man. Thanks for having me. So it's been a great NFL season, and before we get started tonight, I have to say it is Real Deal Sports Talk versus the Dirt Cannon again this week in fantasy football, so we'll have to see how this one plays out this week, see if I can get you guys again. Uh-oh, I better put my lineup in. <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to have to check your lineup, because right now you got Ezekiel Elliott sitting on the bench. I checked that today. I went, all right, they haven't set their lineup yet. <laughs> <laughs> Too many leagues, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot going on, I'm sure. Yeah, busy, busy. That's for sure. That's for sure. <clears throat> so uh, I read the article, read what you put up. Um, let's get into some of the topics this week, all right? Sounds like a plan. All right, top five players that we should start and top five players that we should sit this week. Absolutely. So um, I kind of went a little different direction this week in trying to, to – provide a little bit more insight for our fan base out there and for your listeners. Um, So I wanted to break down uh, in looking at the top five players uh, that you should consider. One from each position, so we're going to look at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end um, this week, and then we'll also look at the defensive uh, teams that you should look at for big play on FanDuel, DraftKings, Yahoo!, So uh, if you've got a couple of these, I also added some player comparisons. And the purpose uh, in which I put the article together for this week uh, that you can uh, see in our sports information section on the dirtcannon.com will also allow you to – these are players that you could plug into our lineup analyzer using promo code uh, RDST and uh, use a free trial this week. So that way you could – Get a, get a look-see into what our uh, lineup analyzer might produce for you and putting together your daily lineups. But also, for season long, you can get in there and do player comparison. So if you're looking, uh, not sure who to start or sit, uh, we've got a tool uh, specifically designed for you within the lineup analyzer. So that said, um, in looking at quarterbacks this week, the top three quarterbacks from the Dirt Cannon's AI machine this week, um, and in looking at value, Uh, From a salary perspective, we've got Andrew Luck, Matt Ryan, and Derek Carr. Um, Andrew Luck is going to be my top quarterback for this week. He's coming off three straight weeks where he's got at least 22 fantasy points. Uh, He's actually only been under under 20 one time all season. So he's been one of the most consistent quarterbacks uh, throughout the year. He, he faces Kansas City's defense, but they're playing in Indianapolis where Andrew Luck has had uh, a significant uptick in terms of fantasy production at home. Kansas City's defense, they tend to play man-to-man on the outside, and so they're susceptible to the deep balls, and I, I really have a, uh, an inclination that Andrew Luck's going to hit T.Y. Hilton for a couple large ones this week. So. Of our, of our quarterback plays, those, those are the three that I would certainly look to target with Andrew Luck being our top uh, quarterback play for this upcoming week. Um, running backs, we've got uh, David Johnson is obviously the leading fantasy running back so far this 